Hi, my name is Mario and for the last 16 plus years I had the privilege to work with thousands of people all across Europe and in three languages. The people came from different nationalities and so for me I learned the mechanics of interpersonal relationships and today I would like to share with you three insights which are from my point of view very very important in order to connect with people from any country. The insights that I want to share with you are universal so it doesn't matter where you are from it should work in every country. The first insight is that everybody lives in his or her own reality which means there are 7.5 billion people on this planet and we have 7.5 billion realities. Some of those realities might overlap more, maybe less, or some might even be totally different. Okay? And it's very, very important to notice because uh, we tend to believe that our reality, the way we see life, is how everybody should see life. And it's not like that because um, everybody creates his or her own reality in his or her head. And therefore it's very, very important first to know that, second to accept that, and third to be very uh, mindful with this aspect. I will give you an, an example. Imagine if I told you Germany is the best country to live in. So now, some might say, maybe yes, so we have a similar reality. And some might say, no, that's total bullshit. Uh, my country is better, whatever your country is, and so on and so forth. So what did I do? What did I do wrong? Why did I offend you? Why did I, um, what did I do wrong? And so, by saying Germany is the best country to live in, this is my reality and so I made my reality now valid for everybody. Which means that if you have the same reality, you might share it and you might agree. But if, you, if in your reality it's a different country, then my phrase attacked your reality. And now you're gonna defend or you're gonna attack or whatever. So it's very, very important to be very mindful with the aspect that there are uh, different realities. So in communication, you could do it like this, that uh, you always, when you talk about you and your reality, that you say, for example, in my opinion, Germany is the best country uh, to live in, or from my point of view, because this nobody can attack. Nobody can tell you, no, this is not, not your point of view. No, um, no, you don't think so, stuff like that. And so just by putting this uh, into perspective and saying, okay, from my perspective or from my point of view, in my opinion, it is like this and that. So you make yourself not attackable, okay? And you don't hurt the realities of other people. And therefore this is a good chance not to get in conflict with different people, uh, but to invite to them to explore why is Germany for you the best country to live in. Yeah? So we get a certain or a different dynamic. So I will give it again to you. If I tell you Germany is the best country to live in, so this might now attack your reality. But if I say, in my opinion, Germany is the best country to live in. So now you might wonder, why is it like this? And so you, you can start asking me, hey Mario, why is it for you that uh, Germany is the best country to live in? And so now we get a different dynamic and it's more like exploring the reality of the other person. So you could now ask me and explore my reality, ask me questions, I can explain why it is, <coughs> why it is like that for me. And then I can ask you, okay, you said, uh, for example, 
India is the best country to live in. Why is it for you that uh, India is the best country to live in? And so we get in a different dynamic and we explore each other's realities and um, by doing so, we can also find overlaps, okay? And maybe find uh, similarities and so on, which helps us build a better relationship between each other. Okay, so this is the first insight. Everybody lives in his or her own reality. Now let's go to the second insight. And the second insight is we are almost always on autopilot. And neuroscience says, uh, especially Daniel Kahneman, who wrote the book Thinking Slow and Fast, and he also got the Nobel Prize uh, for it, he basically explains two systems in our head. So one is the thinking fast, and the other one is the thinking slow uh, system. And so I will give you a short introduction or a short uh, exercise that you can do with me. Okay, so first of all, I would like you to now imagine a burning car. And by now you should have it in, in your head somewhere. And uh, this is because you have experienced it or you have seen it somewhere. Yeah? I hope so only on TV and not uh, in life. Yeah? Uh, or maybe in a magazine or so. But it's there because it's your experience and you can go zack and then you got this image in your head. So let's go for the second one. By the way, this was thinking fast. And now let's go to the second one. And now we'll give you a little exercise, which is from math. And I would like you to calculate, not with a calculator, just in your head. Okay, how much is 17 times 89. So I give you some time. Maybe some of you have it already, maybe some don't. Uh, give you some more time. Okay, do you have it? Well, the answer is 1513. And so, what did this show you, those two exercises? Okay, so the first exercise is with the image with the burning car is uh, your the thinking fast. Okay, so you have experiences, you uh, have knowledge, and your brain goes there very quickly. Zack. And uh, the second exercise, the math exercise, 17, 17 times 89, uh, you needed to use your brain. And this was slower than the first exercise so maybe you you didn't have the answer at all or maybe you were very uh, you had a hard time calculating or maybe you were, you were even pretty quick but still i would bet that it was or it took you longer than with the first exercise and this is that uh, this thinking fast is our autopilot because neuro neuroscience says that 80 to 90 percent during the whole day we are an autopilot which means that uh, you have learned during your life how to get through your life without being harmed without being threatened and uh, so you you learn some programs some patterns which are good uh, for you in your life in your context and so this is hardwired in your brain and so you, then have, you don't have to think about it. Imagine um, if you go, you will want to cross a street. And so you step on the street and then you see a car coming. So imagine now if you had to go thinking slow, then you would be like, okay, there is a car coming. It's about 100 kilometers uh, an hour fast and it will arrive here in four seconds. Boom. So you will be there. So what happens is you learn this and you step on a street, you see the car coming and this calculation, this, uh, this experience just makes you jump away so not to get hit by the car. And 
we are in this, yeah, in this thinking uh, fast, 80-90% of all the time. And so we have good routines or programs and we also have not bad but maybe routines or programs in us that we follow automatically that don't serve us, that don't serve us to, to reach our goals, to, to get to where we want to go. And so therefore it's very, very important to switch to this thinking slow and to really um, look at a situation consciously and to make conscious decisions on how to behave in a certain situation. And now let's, let's go back to the, to the topic of relationships. Maybe you have somebody, maybe a relationship with a, with a colleague or with um, your partner or with your boss or with your um, co-worker, with whoever, okay? And maybe things don't go so well because you act out of your autopilot. And so my suggestion would be that you go there and you try something differently. Consciously do something differently and try to uh, create a different outcome of the situation. So get out of your autopilot and behave or act consciously. So and the third insight is about listening. Because there are different styles of listening and uh, I want to give you two and make you think about it, okay? So um, it's not only important that you listen, I mean this is obvious, but it's important how you listen to somebody. Because you can listen to connect or you can listen to reject. What does this mean? If I listen to connect, I listen to you and I, I think about similarities. I try to understand you. I try to uh, not take my measures in my head, but to see the world from your perspective and to understand you and, and also to find similarities between us. Uh, similarities help relationships to grow. And on the other hand, we have listen to reject which means I would listen to you and I would only uh, look or listen for the, the arguments that I can beat or maybe the, the stuff that's wrong, you know, to make you wrong and all that. And so it's very, very important to listen, to connect. So those are the three insights about trustful relationships. First one was everybody lives in his or her own reality so be mindful with realities explore the reality of somebody else share your own reality talk in perspectives by saying in my opinion in my world in my view it's like this or that second was go out of your autopilot and really act consciously and really try to maybe talk to somebody or, or, or do something differently in your relationship with somebody so to get different results and the third one was to listen to connect uh, in order to really find similarities and see the world through the eyes of your counterpart so i hope you enjoyed and you could take uh, something from this talk which is helpful to you and I say thank you very much for listening to me and if you want you can give me some feedback or ask me some questions and write to me an email on this or to this email address here below.